Assalamu alaikum. Um, welcome to The Disturbing Truth. My name is Alexandra al and I'm joined with Saiha al Yasmin Yasmeen al and Sarah al Assalamu Assalamu alaikum. Um, so recently we discussed the concept of sin um, and how there is basically no inherent good or bad. Um, you know, that sin is to disobey God and good deeds are to obey God um, through his messenger. Um, And today we want to talk about this idea in Christianity um, that Jesus died in the crucifixion in order to atone for people's sins. Um, So this idea, you know, it was brought into the religion by um, someone called Paul, who was not actually a disciple of Jesus. He never met Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, And, um, you know, using the points and proofs that have been made by Abba al-Sadiq from him is peace. um, We're going to examine... Um, whether or not this idea basically that Jesus was sent as a sacrifice um, for humanity's sins, you know, whether this idea actually makes sense, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. So so there's this day, um, the Christians call it the Day of Atonement, right? Um, that they believe the entire, the entire um, doctrine of Christianity is, um, you know, hangs upon the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, right? Mm-hmm. But if you if we go back to the to what the Jews were looking for when they were looking for waiting for the Messiah, they were waiting for a king. Right. Mm -hmm. So they were waiting for a king. Um, The Messiah was supposed to come and establish Israel, a great prophet um, like Moses. He would come and defeat their enemies and they would establish a a kingdom just like Moses tried Mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. So then when when Jesus, son of Mary, when he came and he said, I'm the Messiah, you Mm. know, some believed in him, some disbelieved, some Mm. were just in the middle. They were just waiting. Mm. You know, Mm. they they were just waiting like Like people are waiting now. You know, I'll just wait for the the correct miracle Mm -hmm. and then I'll believe, you know. Mm. So so then after three years into the ministry of Jesus, Mm. uh, he gets crucified in mm-hmm. the apparent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they are shocked. Yeah. They are shocked because because he was saying that he was going to rule. He was going yeah. to be a ruler, a king. Mm. Yeah. So they were shocked. They they had no idea this was going to happen. And even in the in the gospels, like in the, um, in the story of the doubting Thomas, they they never even they didn't even believe that Jesus would be crucified. So why mm. did they? Where did they get this idea? Mm. You know, if in the first generation. Mm-hmm. You know, even the disciples didn't even know this was going to happen mm-hmm. and were shocked and even mm-hmm. ran away from him when mm-hmm. this happened. So obviously there's something missing in mm-hmm. the story if the entire uh, idea mm-hmm. uh, was that Jesus would come down as a sacrifice, mm-hmm. they would know about it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You you would think that this would be like a known thing. They mm-hmm. wouldn't see him as a king at all. Mm-hmm. They would just sure. see him as a, as a goat, as a lamb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, this concept that you're uh, speaking about, so it's um, because after three years, Jesus uh, on the apparent he did get crucified. So there's this man, you may know him. He's uh, this guy, he comes along to the scene, you know. Mm. He's never met Jesus before. And he's the, he goes by the name of Paul. Um, mm. I'm sure people know about him. He's quite well known by both Jews and Christians. Mm. And Paul, what does he do? He decides to, you know, like most of the New Testament is like, you know, most of it, like <clears throat> it's like authored by um, Paul himself, mm-hmm. you know, like him and his uh, companions, that is. Mm. And he, like, he pushes this narrative, you know, quite like uh, forward, which is that, okay, so now he wants to make sense of why Jesus who came, who is the Messiah, he was a prophesied Messiah that was meant to establish the divine state, but he mm. got crucified after three years into his ministry. Mm. So then he's like, okay, you know what happened? It's because, you know, Adam, you know, guys, Adam brought down sin, mm. you know, by disobeying God. So him and his wife brought forth sin. Mm. And Jesus, you know what he did? He got rid of the sin. Do you know how? By killing himself. Mm. You know, this is practically what he's, you know, mm-hmm. this narrative mm-hmm. he's mm. pushing. Mm. So he pushes that. Actually, Jesus was, as you said, the goat, the sacrificial lamb. And uh, he 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 laid down his life like a good lamb would. He presented himself before his father for the sin of the people. Mm-hmm. And he's the one that who, who took it out. So this is the narrative that Paul has pushed forward and it's been accepted widely, as we know, right now. And this is like the ma- main foundation of Christianity, right, mm-hmm. Sasha? Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, is that um, basically the Jewish scholars, they 
they actually, this is their argument, you know. It's like, for them, it's like, Paul, he managed to push this narrative, this story, despite it being a huge contradiction mm. to Judaism mm -hmm. and their teachings. Uh, this concept of that he came forth, the mm. Jewish Messiah came mm. forth and died for the sins of the people. And that mm. was his whole point of mm. um, coming to earth. For them, it's because he, he was preaching at the time to the Gentiles, you know, and the Gentiles, they didn't know the Hebrew language yeah. as well. They didn't know the Torah. They didn't. They, he wasn't preaching to Jews and his message could only be, um, like, you know, really uh, be accepted by the Gentiles because they mm. didn't know any, any, anything better. They're ignorant, you know. Mm. They didn't know the story before that was written in another language. So they didn't Yeah, understand. they didn't have any historical, like, mm. religious background, basically. Yeah. So they were just going on everything that he said. Yeah, and we have mm. to remember that Paul uh, was never met Jesus, peace be upon him, and was never chosen. When Judas uh, Iscariot. Iscariot, he was left and wasn't a part of the disciples and they were 11, they had to get the 12th disciple and that 12th disciple was chosen Already. by the disciples yes. and it had to, the condition was that he has to have met Jesus yeah. in order to be a disciple. And now we have Paul who's yeah. claiming these things and he wasn't even chosen. Exactly. Mm. Exactly, as you said. And, and that's the thing. So he ended up, you know, making the foundation of Christianity. And, and this is a disturbing truth, you mm. know. You have a character like Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Who, who, as you said, didn't meet Jesus Christ. And even, we don't know, you know, much except for what he's claimed. Mm. And he was preaching to the Gentiles who didn't, who didn't have much knowledge of mm. the, uh, the Hebrew Bible. And it, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's insane how, how scary and evil truly mm. ignorance is, you know, mm. because the Gentiles were so ignorant of the actual Jewish teachings. Uh, they didn't know any better. So mm. they fell for this uh, unfortunate, you know, plot of mm. Paul's. And, um, but if they did know, and the virgin birth and the crucifixion, the parent crucifixion and all this stuff, they would learn that it doesn't make any sense mm. why it did happen. Mm. Mm. Exactly. And you know, um, the Jews, they were so against, you know, they were so against human sacrifice. This was one of the things that, yeah. that God mm. hated the most. You know, exactly. he would... You know, there's a there's a, a verses in the Jeremiah where it, he actually God condemns them. You know, he says, "You guys are sacrificing your children, even though I never called for that. I and it, it never even crossed my mind to do this, and you're mm -hmm. you're sacrificing your children." Yeah, mm -hmm. this is what exactly. the people are doing who are like the enemies of God. They're like sacrificing their own children to like Baal and yeah. everything. You can see this mm -hmm. in the Bible, and this was never something that you know no. the prophets mm -hmm. and messengers taught. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So then, yeah. Yeah, we also find in the Quran they have the sim there's the similar idea because mm. in the Quran it says that whoever does an atom's worth of evil shall see it, and whoever does an atom's worth of good shall see it. So we find it in the Quran, and we also find in the Old Testament where it states that the father shall not be put to death for the sins of the son, mm. nor exactly. will the son be put to death for the sins of the father. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So here it's really clear that you have to be responsible for your own sins, and no one can yeah. like be a ransom exactly. uh, for the sins that you've made. Mm -hmm. um, and it's clear in the Old Testament, it's clear in the Quran. So, so uh, the, a man dying as a sacrifice or to f offer himself for uh, to ransom himself for mankind mm. this like you said doesn't exist in judaism and uh, the crucifixion being an atonement for sin is going against what the old testament has stated mm. um god what did he do he commanded the israelites to not to do the bad actions of the previous nations and which was what to not offer children or humans uh, as a sacrifice to the gods just mm. like you mentioned before there were ball worshippers who mm. were sacrificing yeah. their children mm. and uh, the enemies did it right and it's it's so clear and stated in judaism but we find in christianity that they differ in a certain story that is about sacrifice Christians and Jews, they differ in a certain story. Which story is it? Mm. The binding of Isaac. Mm. So we know that uh, Abraham was commanded by God to sacrifice his son. Mm. Uh, according to Christians, it's Isaac. Well, according to Muslims, is uh, Ismail. Mm. Peace be upon them. And so here, what happens is that he Abraham takes his son, Mm -hmm. And he is about to slaughter him. And in the last moment, God stops him and tells him, you don't have to do it. I was just testing you and I would never do this to you. Mm. And so what happens is he tells him, 
do go uh, and uh, exchange it for a lamb or a ram, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. And so the Christians, what do they say about this? They say, okay, you see here, God commanded um, um, Abraham to sacrifice his son because God himself was intending to, in the future, sacrifice his own son, mm. Jesus, mm. okay? But the Jews, on the other hand, they say, no, that's not what it is. Yeah. Uh, God is here by this story stating that it's impossible that Mm. God would accept human sacrifice and he would exchange it for an animal. That's why God never allowed Abraham to sacrifice his son. Mm. Yes. I mean, you know, the, the Christian, the Christian idea, the one that, that, um, that was most prominent in, in the culture that I grew up in was, Mm. was the, that in the story of Abraham and Isaac, you know, um, God, when, when he stopped, Abraham, he said, don't sacrifice your son. I would never tell you to do this. You know, it was only a test. And he provided an animal Mm. for him. He said, look in the bush and there's an animal there for you. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that the Isaac is like humanity Mm. and, and, um, like the the animal was a ransom with which was Jesus. Mm. So he was basically saying that Jesus was the sacrifice provided by God in place of humanity mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's exactly so here's that's how they see it right yeah uh, while the jews are like no this is not how it works mm-hmm. so in judaism mm-hmm. it's every man for himself right yeah you are not supposed to die for someone else's sin and only the animals can atone for your sin mm. And we see this taking place in the Day of Atonement, right? Yeah, so there's this concept in Judaism called the Day of Atonement. Um, It's very important for Jews, basically. It's the day when Israel gets rid of its sins. Mm. Um, So they have these bad deeds, basically, um, you know, as a nation. Um, And the priest, he offers um, a sacrifice, which is first on behalf of his own self. He brings Mm. forward two goats, basically, and casts Mm. lots on them. And so one of the goats is presented as a sacrifice to God. Um, and one of the um, one of the the other goat is to be offered to Azazel or Iblis or Lucifer mm. or Satan. Um, so basically, he would um, transfer by confession and ritual all of the sins of the Israelites um, and him um, from himself. Sorry, on behalf of the nation onto the goat, mm. um, which is meant for the devil. Um, and then the the goat meant for um, the devil or Azazel is taken out and let loose in the wilderness. So. Mm. It's just like set free, basically. It's like mm. taken on all of the sins and it's just, okay, yeah. like let loose. Um, and the goat that is meant for the Lord is sacrificed. Mm. The goat that is meant for God is sacrificed. Um, so this idea, basically, Israel gets rid of all of its sins by place, um, placing its collective sins onto this goat mm. um, before setting it free. Um, and, you know, so this story becomes problematic for Jews, um, you know, when accepting the notion of Jesus, um, you know, if God can load all of the sins Mm -hmm. of the Israelites onto a goat, um, why would he need to sacrifice his Messiah or even a human being for that? It's like completely unnecessary. A goat is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is from God's own instructions in the Torah. This is, he instructs, Mm -hmm. instructs Moses to tell Aaron to perform this ritual. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't make sense given this, um, practice that they have in Judaism that they would ever accept Mm. the idea that God sent um, you know the The Messiah Messiah. to be sacrificed Mm. because they already have this idea that a goat is enough Enough, Mm. yeah Yeah. Mm. I mean it makes makes sense sense, right it just doesn't make sense that you would as someone who's also God's son in their eyes like Mm. why why would God do that when there is other options that has been happening before like in the history books in the Old Testament it's written a way to do it it just, it just doesn't, doesn't make, make sense, sense no. at all, right? Yeah. It doesn't you see? It doesn't if you read the Torah if, mm-hmm. and you study it and you study their beliefs. You know, this is why we had one of those episodes where we talk about the trilogy. You know, that you have to read the Torah, the, mm. the, the Old Testament, basically the New Testament, and the, the Quran together for mm. you to really understand the bigger picture and where actually the corruptions mm. are taking place. Mm. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, so the Christians, you know, they try really hard to connect this ritual to Jesus, you know, because this is their entire religion. Mm -hmm. This is like a pillar Mm -hmm. of their religion, you know. So, so there's this theory. There are many, they have many theories about um, why this happened. Why would God um, do that or how, you Mm know. Um, So, so there's this one theory from St. Augustine. Mm-hmm. And he basically says that the reason 
um, for the sacrifice was that when Adam sinned, um, he basically um, made a contract with the devil. Mm-hmm. Like he, ba- it, the devil. Uh, so he basically sold himself and all of mankind after him to the devil. So, so then to um, to like to atone for this for this, he, he now has to make the sacrifice of the goat. Mm-hmm. So this yearly ritual or whatever. Now, now they have to make the sacrifice. So then, so then God, he decided to trick Satan, mm. you know, because now uh, God apparently owes Satan this, the, the children of, yeah. of Adam, mm. you know, so, so he, so he sends his son, Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, to atone as atonement instead of the goat, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and then, and then Jesus, you know, he dies for, and he's dead for three days and three nights, you know, mm-hmm. so, it, so he basically tricks Satan because, because, um, the reason why, um, Adam, you know, has this contract mm-hmm. with, uh, with, uh, with Satan is because of the sin, mm-hmm. you know? So now Jesus, he was sinless. Mm-hmm. So he basically tricks, uh, the devil. God tricks the devil by, by giving him the sinless sacrifice. So mm-hmm. then he has no hold over him. He, the contract breaks. So he does this in exchange, uh, that God and Satan basically had a, a, a deal, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Um, so, so, uh, he would give him Jesus Mm -hmm. and then, and then he would release all the souls, um, that the devil has, um, Mm. who would believe in Jesus and his sacrifice. Mm. So then, so then when Jesus dies, he basically goes into the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. Mm. And then during that time, uh, the souls are released into God's hand and then and then jesus comes back to life and 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 the devil is a lo- like a loser it's interesting mm. that that, <laughs> yeah. that this story has come to life and i'm wondering really is it something that he thought for himself like now i have to m- make sense of the story yeah. and then let me just figure out a story and what it could be and and it sounds more like a theory than yeah. a reality right mm. so there's no evidence so for there's this no at evidence all, where yeah. where was the evidence for this mm. story which is really dangerous by the way to have theories and that then in the end becomes a truth for a lot of people mm-hmm. yeah and if you notice like many of the theories you do here uh, they're all just trying to push this agenda and this narrative again back to what Paul said, which is the um, mm. that Jesus is a sacrificial lamb. Mm. He's the goat. You mm. know, he's he was sent here just to die, and and yeah. and we know what we're talking about. Trust mm. us. You know, mm. because at the, end of the end of the day, they just want to try and make sense of like um, the three year ministry. Like, why would the Jewish Messiah mm. just come and just all of a sudden die? He he yeah. he had miracles. He did everything. Why did that end that way? Mm. There must be a reason. So they just come up with this ignorant, you know theory yeah. and also you know it's like an appealing message for some people to hear this because we've kind of covered this subject before it's like if someone if you're telling someone who's not religious you know oh this person died for all of your sins so you don't really yeah. need to change your behavior but you'll actually get salvation in the afterlife if you just accept this man who died yeah. in the past for your sins oh it's um, so you know, it's, such, it's, such, knew that. It's, yeah. it's like a very appealing message and like he knew like you said like he would get people to accept his message um but he you know he completely changed changed the truth he corrupted the truth yeah. and you know we know as jesus said when you find the truth you will be disturbed or when you yeah. seek you'll find and when you find you'll be disturbed so it's like the truth isn't something that's always so like appealing um, yeah. and so easy to hear but what paul did basically he made, made it, it very to easy to hear yeah. it's like um, this uh, amazing man came here he did it all for us don't worry guys he's 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 died for us since you guys if you just accept that he did that it's all good for you. Mm. Mm. And then it just stops everything there, you know. Jesus becomes the 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 last thing and that's it. And you can't go forward from there. Yeah. And then Paul becomes the one who has this extremely appealing yeah, message. Exactly. So the people are following him, you know, they're happy to hear what he's saying yeah. because obviously it's it, it feels it's good the for them. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, What's so dangerous about that mm. is it reminds me of the narration that says a hellfire called Paul, right? Mm. Talking When the Ahl Bayt are talking about Paul, they mention him as a hellfire called Mm. Paul. So obviously he's not something good. He's 
evil. Yeah. And so what is he doing by saying that, oh, your sins are sorted. You don't have to think about it. You can sin as much as you want because Jesus died for your sins. Mm. It's allowing you to go in the path of the devil because if you think that you're sinless now mm -hmm. and nothing is going to happen no to you, you don't have to submit to, you him, have you? To submit to God anymore. As yeah. long as you believe Jesus was the savior and he's the Messiah, then you you can do whatever you want. But yeah. that's walking the path of the devil. Exactly. And know? we know like Jesus was calling for people to obey the law. Mm. They were, he was calling people to obey God and he was calling people and to do things them. that were heavy on mm. them that were hard for them mm. to do. And so this message that Paul came, he's using the name of Jesus, but yeah. actually the whole message of Jesus, he's completely corrupted yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And following the devil, when I say that, I mean like you, you, it allows you to make sins like murder and like like crimes that is, mm. is, is the path of the devil. So you become a person who who commit crimes you don't even submit to god which is the most important point mm. and you just think your sins are are like yeah. they don't count you know it's, they're not there it's anymore so, yeah. it's so dangerous they basically you know you're born a sinner you can't help it you're gonna mm. make mistakes you're you're a dirty person you mm. you're born that way so it's not your fault and you know you can do whatever you want it's okay it you know just mm. somebody else will die for you yeah you know, it's so, it's so mm. dangerous. It's so evil to mm. because the entire message of Jesus so is that God like a, will reward yeah. you for your mm. deeds. So mm. do to others what you would want yeah. done to mm. yourself, because mm. when you do something to others, that's what's going to happen to you. He yeah. literally says, do not judge or you will, will be judged. Be judged. Mm. Have mercy so that you can have mercy. Mm. You know, the entire teaching was the golden rule. And here it comes, Paul. He says, you know what? Do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, it goes it's against some, everything. Mm, and knowing what we all know now and what we put forth, it just kind of takes away that foundation, you know. It makes mm. it sound illogical, that foundation yeah. on Christianity, that this is why he mm. came. Mm. And then... Then and then on the other hand you have like the Muslims you see the Muslims they don't they don't have an issue with Jesus's ministry dying dying, uh, dying out after three years because for them at the end of the day it doesn't take away his um, claim mm. as a prophet from God and uh, because it, and uh, because you know his crucifixion was um, shown he didn't really die on the cross they believe so for them it doesn't change anything mm. because they still believe he's the forerunner to uh, Prophet Muhammad yeah mm. but with the Christians there is no Muhammad now. You mm -hmm. know, they can't move forward from Jesus because for them, he, he had to die on the cross and this yeah, was the understand. end of it. And so this idea actually, it was it it, another them. way it's dangerous is it's like preventing people from actually finding the man of the time, the exactly. imam of the time who's That's appointed. That's why what Paul yeah. did, okay, this is what I was like from whom his peace is, is trying to tell the Christians, yeah. uh, the Christian nation who are, are true seekers of God as well. You know, mm. it's not like he's saying people are bad. It's just his point course, is he, yeah. people are ig they're ignorant. Um, they're they've scholars been and they're teachers and they've been misguided. Yeah. And as the Mehdi, which means guide, he has to guide them back to the straight yeah. path. And he's trying to tell them what, why Paul and the Alul Bayt mentioned, mm. as you mentioned the narration, why he was mm. called a hellfire is because this is something so huge. That's like 2 billion people astray who believe mm. in the, who believe in Jesus. Mm. Like Jesus was a true Messiah. They do. Mm. But what he stood for and his stance, they've got that wrong. And that's because of this man. He's led all these people as, like, like away from the true Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's so dangerous. And this is why the Mahdi had to and must correct, mm -hmm. you know, for that's one of his duty duties, you know, from God. Mm -hmm. That's like correcting this whole like misconception of why mm -hmm. Jesus, who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. So now we're like left at a position for the Christians. It's like, okay, so he came and he didn't establish a state. Mm -hmm. So you're saying he came, he didn't establish a state, but then he also didn't die mm -hmm. for my sins. Then why was he here? Mm. What did he do? Mm. Why did he come? You know, mm. so all these assumptions are like in their minds, and uh, they don't even know the covenant that he he made. You know, in the Last Supper, they don't. There's also assumptions based on the covenant. They don't even understand. Even the disciples themselves didn't understand the covenant yeah. fully, let alone the Christians today. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. what, like the whole basis of Christianity, they, they need to understand. It's like on. It's not even on sand. It's mm. on nothing. Mm. You know. It's that's why. The, it's a it's very dangerous to to claim it as a belief in God and uh, Jesus because there's there's nothing there's nothing you're really standing on nothing mm. and it's easy for the wolves to come eat you mm. yeah definitely I, I think also if we go into Islam and look into this aspect of of um, uh, sacrifice to mm. just see what does Islam say about it um, and we see that there 
you also do sacrifices in exchange of something. Yeah. This this concept does exist, right? Uh, we have something called laqiqa uh, or aqiqa, which is what the parents, they sacrifice uh, an animal when the newborn is born, right? Mm. Um, and what do they do? Why do they do that? They say it's because in case something bad would happen to the child, this sacrifice will prevent it from happening. Mm -hmm. So they sacri every, you see every Muslim will do that. They sacrifice an animal uh, and now hopefully no bad things will happen or mm -hmm. not hopefully, actually this will take away bad things. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is like a ransom of an, uh, you rans God ransoms it with an animal, right? Mm -hmm. And it becomes like the binding of Isaac or Ismail, if you want to say. And because here, there, he did the same thing. In order for something bad not to happen, what happened, he sacrificed the mm. ram instead. Mm. And it's it's not a sacrifice in exchange of sin here. It's a sacrifice in exchange of well-being. That's the difference. That's how they see it in Islam. Mm. Um, a sacrifice in exchange of a sin is a concept that doesn't exist in Islam. It do, it's something that ex exists in Judaism, not in mm. Islam. Mm. And you can repent for a person if you have any sin. What you need to do is you repent without having any bloodshed, right? You don't have to shed any blood in exchange for your sins. Mm. Mm. So that's usually how it works in Islam. Yeah. Um, so Abu al-Sadiq um, from his piece, when he's talking about this... Um, you know, the subject of the, um, you know, the sacrifice and the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. He mentions, again, this Gnostic text, al Haft al-Sharif, which you've mentioned yeah. many times. Um, so this text, basically, it states that um, God created the bodies out of the good deeds and the bad deeds of the soul. So mm -hmm. the the physical bodies on this earth, that are a reward and a punishment, actually, for the souls um, made from their good deeds and made from their bad deeds. Mm -hmm. um, so all human bodies on the planet were created and made in the likeness of Adam and they're meant for the sons of Adam actually mm -hmm. alone. Um, and, you know, all the deformed bodies, they fall into one category. Um, so the bodies that are deformed, it's meaning the animals, the mask, mm -hmm. um, the birds, you know, the fish and beasts. Um, so all of the bodies of these animals, they were actually made from the sins of the people. They mm -hmm. were created out of sin. Um, and the human bodies, they're made from the good deeds of the people. Mm -hmm. um, the human bodies, you know, they're specifically for the sons of Adam and the animal bodies, they're all, as, they're all made basically as homes for the evil spirits, the demons um, and the sons and, da and daughters of Iblis. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this is, you know, this is the meaning. This is the reason why that these bodies were actually created in the first place. It's from the sins. Wow. So interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is really it's interesting. interesting. So... So now that we have this piece of information mm. that's yeah. from Al Haft al Sharif, mm. now the entire ritual of the Day of Atonement, the Jewish ritual, makes yeah. perfect exactly. sense. Yeah. Yeah. It makes mm. perfect sense because because now God is showing us, you know, the it, the Israelites, His people, His chosen people. Look, you know, you put so you put all of all of these sins, you know, of the people, and you put it on the goat, mm. you know, the body that was made the home of 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 satan of mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. demons mm -hmm. you know that's the home of sin so mm -hmm. they basically take from the children of israel and put it where they belong into mm -hmm. the home of sin and then they let it go and then the other one is also the body for azazel mm -hmm. you know the devil and mm -hmm. the demons and it's sacrificed mm -hmm. yeah. you know so so he's showing them that that the animal bodies are made for this purpose mm -hmm. yes. because those who have the animal body be, because the the animal bodies were made out of the sins of the people mm -hmm. yes. so that's where the sin belongs and that's what gets sacrificed because the penalty of sin of those who disobey god you know Des they deserve death yes, mm -hmm. exactly. so that's the penalty of sin is death and and the animal body has is to the has to die. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So it's the animal body, not the human body. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. So in this, this there's like two demonstrations of what happens. Yeah. You know, to the sins of the people is one. You you put it on this goat, you send it away, mm -hmm. and then you put it on this goat and you slaughter it. Mm -hmm. You know. So this is also where you get the the idea of um, of pan and and 
Beth Bethamet yeah. is that Bethamet. Bethamet. Yeah. 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 you know it, the half goat half mm. human yeah. creature that that stands for Satan mm. yeah. this is where it comes from and this is you know mm. this is the origin of that because this is the reality mm. you know the half goat half human you mm. know and this is also why we see you know um this idea that that some that a lot of we've talked about this mm. before mm. where where there are people who in their reality are animals mm. Yes. Mm. you know that's that's mm. where we get it from mm. is because is because satan mm. you know even though at times he comes as a human being mm. actually his body and the reincarnation where he belongs mm. is an animal body mm. yeah it's a uh, It's a very like a heavy topic actually. It is. Mm. When like this it, was revealed, like yeah. when Abbas Sadiq revealed this from him his peace, it's so huge because for a Christian to hear something like this, it becomes I think really difficult because you've thought something else your whole life. Yeah. For mm. you Jesus is the one who sacrificed himself, but then you find out no, it's supposed to be an animal because that's where the demons go, mm. you know? This is why it's so important like, to read Christ all the, the texts. Yeah. You have to believe in all the prophets. You have to believe in all the books. This yeah. is why it's so important. You cannot just believe in one little single little part of the story because this is how you get these theories. Yeah, But they're these based on nothing. They're just based yeah. on people's imagination or guesswork. Mm. When you have these, these things in all of the books, mm. and if you just believe in the books and you read them and you get the full picture you know you can understand these much yeah. better and what yeah. a way to devalue such a great uh, great That's character right? in history you know yeah. like the, someone like jesus who mm. like changed well, they see the, as the son of god you know yeah the son of god and the way yeah. he's just changed the, well like, why would somebody do that to their son yeah. you know just on a normal like if, if a human being can do it, this is god you know he's like mm. beyond merciful and mm -hmm. the most compassionate you know mm. So yeah. then what happens is that uh, if you continue with Al-Haft, you find out um, the, the everything returns to its origin. Mm. Okay, mm. So bad deeds do have an origin and so do good deeds. And what does this mean? This means that, so now imagine like the believer now, he stands before God on the day of judgment. Mm. God, uh, God uh, uh, and he enjoys the forgiveness bestowed upon him. God forgives him for all his sins. And then Mufadil asked Imam Jafar Sadiq, then where do those sins go, Master? And the Imam replied to him, they return to their origin. Mm. They return to the disbeliever, you know, mm. where they came from. Mm. And uh, when, when, when you've, when, if this is the first time you've heard that, it can be quite, you know, disturbing. Mm. Like um, that, okay, so the origin of a bad deed is a, someone who disbelieves in the supremacy of God. Mm. right yeah. that's what essentially it means exactly mm -hmm. yeah because we this, as we covered in the previous episode about sin exactly you know, to actually commit a sin is to go against god mm. so exactly believe in the supremacy of god yeah okay so what happens then so then then you can maybe have more questions now then you're like okay then why do the believers who do believe in the supremacy of god why do they actually do bad deeds mm. like why do they also sin And why uh, do some of the disbelievers maybe do like mm -hmm. s kind of small acts of kindness you can catch them with, you mm -hmm. know, because it, it does happen. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, the imam replied like this, uh, reply that makes way more sense now with the knowledge we have from Abu Sadiq from him is peace. And, uh, you know, like, thank God for that. Mm -hmm. But because when you don't have this knowledge and you read the Al-Haft just for what it is, it can be quite like, you know, Difficult, it, to, difficult understand. to understand yeah. like how how did that happen mm. like how did that how it can give you have a lot of questions mm. and that is that we have a mixture of our clay you yeah. know mm. so we're a mixed nation in a sense mm. what so in the beginning of time they were what the sons of Adam mm. Mm. and then Cain came along and then he committed a very bad deed which was murder mm. so how did you do that How did Cain commit murder? Where did the bad deed come from? Mm -hmm. If the sons of Adam don't sin, yeah. mm -hmm. is a question that you can have when you read mm -hmm. the Al-Haft. You're mm -hmm. like, okay, well, okay, then where did that come? Where did the disbelievers come from? Where did this? Oh, how did this even happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an important mm -hmm. question. If you're right? all the sons of Adam, uh, so sons and daughters, children of Adam, then mm -hmm. w where is this coming from? And then if it wasn't for Abu Salih from his piece revealing with the evidence, mm -hmm. with many like, and that's why you have to read, uh, uh, watch the previous episodes or read the Goal of mm -hmm. the Wise that's sitting right here on the table. Mm -hmm. Um, you actually a lot would make sense, and that is because. But uh, in in summary, uh, it's because Cain, his father, is not Adam. It's yeah. uh, it's Satan himself is yeah. the father, 
and so you have this clay you have the clay of Cain mm. and the clay of the clay of uh, Seth mm. Abel if you Seth the same thing mm. Adam and these clays they ended up mixing why because you know people as t- as they multiplied the people of uh, Satan multiplied yeah. so did the people of Adam and uh, mixtures had they happened they just didn't keep mm. like the different like, naturally yeah. you couldn't why because you have like this um they couldn't tell because we're all in the human bodies yeah. mm. so uh, and the seeds kept mixing and this mixture create this is why uh, good people do bad things and bad people can do good things you mm. know exactly mm. but the imam says on that day if they die upon Mm. like basically he's essentially saying if you die upon as a son of Adam which is like believing in the supremacy of God then all your good deeds from that disbeliever will com- come to you they'll return to you why? because they belong to you because you're mm-hmm. the son of Adam you're the yeah. daughter of yeah, Adam yeah, and exactly. you are you cannot make mistakes uh, your clay is pure your clay clay is not capable like capable of making bad mistakes so because of that reason they will return to you mm. and the sins that you committed they will return to the disbeliever the mm. children of Cain mm. mm. it's 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 a re- it's a relief yet a scary uh, revelation actually yeah. mm. and anyone who accepts the supremacy of god the fact that god appoints the ruler and you know follows the ruler who's appointed by god they are a son of adam mm. exactly mm. that that is what makes them a son of adam mm. okay exactly um so and um yeah that's es- es- essentially it you know mm. so it's just the concept of that this mixing has taken place mm. and this is why you know you know generations after generations you see these sins but the sins they return to their origin yeah. like you don't need what's the point you don't need like a, another human being a good righteous human being at that mm. to carry those sins mm. when god's already created something, something to carry, carry them it, right which is as you said the animal yeah, yeah. the creature by like which is like you know created from the sin mm-hmm. and itself or or it will return to the origin which is a sin a sinful person mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. so with this understanding the story of the binding of isaac or ismail it makes more, more sense, sense right so we have imam al-sadiq explicitly mentioning the story in al-hafd al-sharif and he mentions a secret mm-hmm. behind it so he mentions in in here that satan he actually incarnates as cain Mm. Okay, and then Cain he ends up killing Abel. So yeah. it's actually it's Satan who does this mm, deed. Exactly. It's Satan who commits this sin, and then it goes all the way down to the time of Abraham. Um, and um, Imam al-Sadiq he reveals that the lamb or the ram um, that was bought as a ransom um, for Isaac or Ismail is actually Cain. Mm. Right, it's Cain it's or yes, Omar or yeah. Iblis in the too. form of a ram. So it was mm. his Justice. soul that was being punished in the form mm. of mask mm. yes. for this. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and um, so interesting because we just said that. Um, Paul wanted to make it sound like, or he said that it's Jesus who is that. So he's basically saying that Jesus is the is the devil, mm-hmm. and he's telling people to follow that idea without exactly. them knowing that it was the devil. Mm. Mm-hmm. So Imam Sadiq he says that God is too merciful, He's too loving, right? He would never allow His preferred ones to be sacrificed in mm-hmm. this way. Um, you know, never allow them to taste the heat of the iron or the punishment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, God, he's merciful, he's loving, he's caring. Mm-hmm. He never sins against his preferred ones. And this mm-hmm. idea basically that he sends his son to be a sacrifice, it's completely like the opposite yeah. of what God does. Mm-hmm. Um, so he doesn't even allow them to experience death or even a mm-hmm. state of being tired or any sort of negative feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, and he doesn't make them get tortured. He doesn't mm-hmm. make them get killed. You see how um, merciful God exactly. is. Exactly. And he certainly does not offer his mm-hmm. preferred ones, the believers, um, you know, as a sacrifice um, at the hands of the disbelievers. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right, he would never do this. So in the Quran, um, it states that God would never allow for the disbelievers to have an upper hand on the believers. Mm. Exactly. Um, and you know, it's God's duty. Abba al it from him. He says in this episode that it's God's duty to protect the believers and make them mm. um, be the ones who are victorious and have the upper hand over mm. the non-believers, and not vice versa. Mm. Um, you no, know, there's there's this also this theory, you know, because because some Christians might argue. Okay, well, you know, the mercy of God that we believe in is that God um, manifested himself in the human son and it's just God himself who made himself, you Mm. know, a human being and then died for our sins himself Mm. just to save Mm. him uh, to save us from himself mm. <laughs> but this yeah. doesn't make any sense no. i mean there's no evidence yeah. for this you know no. n- none in any scriptures and if you uh believe i mean yeah i mean if you want to believe in in something that's mm. completely made up and and has mm. no evidence Go ahead. just mm. blind belief sure yeah. you know um that's fine but this is not how god does things no. god yeah. would no. never do this this is so confusing how mm. can you 
how how could the mer- most mm. merciful God mm. have this thing that ca- comes from the mind of man yeah, because, and it doesn't come from yeah. his own words and, and they believe the Bible mm. and, and the Jewish scriptures are the word of God mm. but how come the word of God doesn't say this? Yeah, because the mm. companions of Al-Qa'am, this is the difference, they are the companions of the proof, right? The co- evidence. Mm. Evidence. Mm. Yeah. So this is an important thing. Exactly. And all of the evidence is pointing yeah. away from this yeah, idea in Christianity. Um, so yeah, you know, this punishment, the death, the torture, the animal bodies mm. are meant for the disbelievers, basically, yes. is the point that he's making in this video. You know, later on in the book, Haftar Sharif, it continues with uh, with the uh, Mfadal asking Imam Sadiq from uh, peace be upon him. and um, Or they're actually standing there at the Kaaba and watching it. And mm. um, they're looking at the people circling around the Kaaba and on the mm. door of the Kaaba, there is these horns hanging out down. Okay. And, uh, it's the, the horns that was uh, from the ram that was sacrificed, mm. from a, the ram that Abraham sacrificed and they're hanging there. They were removed later. They were stolen. But what people were doing, they were, they were going around there and praising the horns and touching it. And, you know, as if it's something really important and, and, and that, holy, holy, right. Mm. Uh, and, um, Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, looked at them and he, he laughed and he said something along the lines like, look at these back, this backward creation. Mm. They're over there. They're praising these um, horns and they don't even know that they're the horns of the devil that was in the form of the ram in the time of Abraham. So this this that Abu Sadiq has revealed that it, it's it's uh, the devil that was the ram. It's there in the narrations. Mm. Mm. And so... Um, and Mufaddal get his his eyes wiped over his you know he Imam Sadiq wipes over his eyes and he get to see what is it's there these these people that are supposed to be Muslims they they have abandoned the appointed leaders by God right and they are following the leaders that were chosen by the Muslims mm. because at that time Imam Sadiq wasn't chosen the yeah, people yeah. weren't following they him the they the followed time. the Caliph of the time who's what Umar al Bakr and all these uh, exactly. uh, creatures you mm. know that came, after uh, that came after him and now when the his eyes were wiped, o- wiped over. He saw monkeys and bears and all these a- animals and creatures. They were mm. not human. Mm. Wow. So, so, so now we see um, that God is just, mm. right? So, so we see all these, all these people mm-hmm. who are in actuality animals. Yeah. So we think, what, what, why? Mm. Yeah? yeah. So because of, of, um, of how just God is mm. so that, the devils would not be able to say, well, we, if we had human bodies and not animal bodies, we would do good. Mm. So he gives them a chance by incarnating them into human bodies. Yeah. So everyone has so that everyone has a fair chance mm. And, mm. and that he is just. Mm. So this is how we have mix, the mixing that Sarah was talking about, mm. about how there are people who are who are sons of adam but they have some evil inclinations some sins Mm. because of this because of because of this mixture so so when when god would incarnate these these um devils uh, these bad people into human bodies they would oppress the sons of adam Mm. they would they would kill them they would torture them Mm. they would they would constantly make their life a living hell on earth Mm. you know so so then they're 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 going to return to their original bodies and um when god takes vengeance Mm. on them it will be justified yeah. because they did, um, you know, even though God was just to them and he yeah. gave them a chance, they decided to do evil yeah. to the sons of Adam. Yeah. yeah. And this concept of ransoming, right, it's mentioned in the al Yeah, so. and al it, continu- it continues it. And the summary of it really is that um, Imam, uh, he, Imam Fadal asks about Imam Hussein sacrificing Karbala. Mm. Mm. And then he mentions no. Uh, basically uh, he didn't taste the iron he didn't die (laughs) why would God allow him to be tortured and by the disbelieving hands God actually saved him just as he saved the son of Mary Jesus and Mm. then he shows him the verse in the Quran that states and um, they did not crucify him nor kill him but it was Mm. appeared to look look as if it was so exactly Mm. yeah um, so we're going to have to end it there. But I think, you know, over this episode, we've really proven using these points put forward by Abba al-Sadiq from him is peace that, you know, this idea of human sacrifice 
in the mm. Abrahamic religions, it really isn't possible and it's mm. really clearly against the will of God. Mm. Um, so we'll leave it there. Um, thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Mm.